Okay, so during this video, I will be showing how to get started with CV on Kubernetes using Helm packages. I will be showing how to install the Helm packages provided by CV in order to get the CV cluster plus some other components into your Kubernetes cluster. Uh, for this video, I will be using Git, Java, and Maven to build workers, but I will be using Helm, uh, which is a package manager for Kubernetes uh, manifests. Uh, we are using Helm in order to be able to distribute uh, these you know, Kubernetes manifests that are going to deploy our CV cluster into Kubernetes and to be able to, to create new releases every month to improve, to provide more customizations for how we deploy CV on Kubernetes. Um, during this uh, short uh, video, I will be showing how to install the most common tools and I will be using Kubernetes kind, which is uh, it kind of stands for Kubernetes in Docker. Uh, so basically you can create a local Kubernetes cluster for development purposes in your own laptop. And in order to install this, you only need to have Docker. In this case, I have Docker for Mac, which is installed and running. Uh, and Kubernetes kind is going to use that installation. So the first thing that you need to have in order to run this tutorial, you need to have a local Kubernetes cluster or a remote Kubernetes cluster. It should work with both. So I have already have Kind installed, and if you take a look on, in the Kind page, this is how you create a new Kubernetes cluster. Kind create cluster, it will give you a new local Kubernetes cluster for you to run. And that will also configure kubectl to connect to that cluster. So if we have that, uh, the next step is to install Helm. And in order to install Helm, which is basically two parts, first of all, we have a client called Helm. This is a command line tool. And then we have the server part, which is called Killer, uh, which is the one in charge of installing the actual components in the server. So we have the client already installed here in my laptop, and we will be calling using the client. Uh, we'll go to the backend, and the backend will install all the packages that we will be uh, looking at in, in a few minutes. So the first thing that you need to do if you're running with Helm, uh, it's to install Helm. And for that, you first need to uh, create some com security configurations uh, for the cluster to enable Tiller to install all these components. And we will do that by running this command that I have here. Uh, you can get that file, this file, like Helm services account roles, uh, YAML file here in this uh, repository that I've created, CV Gates getting started. And I recommend you to clone this uh, because you will have also a process definition and some specific values for, for kind if you're interested in running this tutorial. So if you have all that set up already, we can just run this. You can see here I've created my cluster. So K here is kubectl, it's just an alias, and I can definitely then run this command to install and to create the security, the service account, and the cluster role binding for my cluster. That's basically Helm getting started, and then I will just initialize Helm so the server side components gets bootstrapped. So this is basically creating a service in Kubernetes and starting a pod that it contains Tiller and then it will do the deployments. So at some point that pod will be up and running and I will be able to then add the official Helm charts for CV here. We are adding the CV repository, which is pointing to Helm, cv.io. You can visit that site as well. It has the instructions. So you can check that, it tells you exactly that. So you need to add the repository and then you can just run an update from that. And you will just get all the new chart definitions, uh, including you know the CV charts that are defined here. This repository also explains which Helm charts are provided. Right now we have three Helm charts, one for the CV cluster, one for operate, and one that basically contains both of them, plus an Nginx controller. Right. So it doesn't really matter which Kubernetes cluster are you deploying these, uh, depending on where you are deploying it is, you know, the amount of features that you're going to have there. You can also go and just deploy a CV cluster and then separate separately just deploy operate and then have your own ingress controller if you want to do that. In this tutorial, I will be installing all the components with CV Kubernetes full. So that's done there. The next thing that we can do now is if we follow the guide is we can definitely install our uh, CV cluster. And again here, like there is a difference here if you're running Kubernetes kind, which I am right now, uh, I have a specific uh, values file for kind, which basically, you know, shut down some of the services and make it, you know, smaller in order to be able to run inside my computer. So I will copy this, I will replace rena release name here. You need to replace your release name with the Helm release name, and you can use tool 
install and uninstall things and it's going to be used to prefix some of the services inside this release so i'm just doing that i'm installing cv and that's the version of the helm package that i'm installing in there right so if i do get pods now kubectl get pods in order to see what's running you will see that now we're running Elasticsearch. we are running the cv cluster here we are running operate and we are running the ingress the nginx ingress controller the first time that you do that in a time cluster uh, it will download all these docker images right so it might take some time until you get all docker images downloaded you can keep checking this with qctl get pods in this case and you will see that this says container creating but that's basically fetching these docker images i will be right back as soon as the docker images gets downloaded and i will continue from there okay so in my computer that took around like six minutes to download all the docker images it shouldn't take that long so if you're running in in google cloud it takes like 30 seconds to download all, everything because it's you know it's remote uh so now i have the entire cluster up and running i have the cv cluster there i have operate but then the, the next question that will appear is that okay so how do i contact how do i interact with these services uh, remember that these services are running inside the cluster so we need a way to route traffic from my local environment to the cluster uh, in Kubernetes, the way to do that usually is using that ingress controller to route traffic. But in general, we don't want to expose the CV cluster, uh, which is using gRPC to communicate. So uh, I will just do a port forward in order to go to that cluster specifically. If you take a look at the guide, the next step is to uh, open inside the modeler the emergency processes uh, process ppmn uh, file that is provided in this repository. And we can do that with the CV modeler. I can show you quickly how the process looks like. So it's a very, very simple process. It has three service tasks and one exclusive gateway. Uh, and each service task will require an implementation. In this case, a worker, a CV worker that is called classify in this case, then hospital, and then firefight firefighters, right? And the gateway will define uh, if the emergency is, uh, you know, a fire emergency or a, an emergency uh, involving a person. And based on that, it's going to execute different uh, jobs in this case. And as you can see, this is like an emergency related uh, process. And again, this is quite simple just to demonstrate, but the, the whole idea here is that you can download the modeler, create your own process and run it in the same way that I'm, I'm doing here. So if you have this process already, and I'm providing you that into this repository, you can quickly deploy that. In order to deploy it, you can create a client using Java or using Node.js or using net as well i think uh, or uh, you can use the cvctl command line tool uh, that you can get from here as well so if we have everything up and running uh, we can definitely access the cluster by doing a port forward on our service on our cv cluster uh, and we will need to do that in order to be able to connect our cvctl command line tool into the cluster in order to deploy processes so let's do this first so basically what i'm doing here is I am forwarding traffic from my local environment to the CV cluster. And I will do that by doing that, right? So now I'm forwarding cluster, uh, I'm forwarding traffic from my local host 26500 to the cluster service that is called CV in that case, 26500. Okay, that means that if I open a new terminal and I export the kind cluster configuration, and now I can do cvctl uh, status and I can interact with the cluster. So I'm getting the cluster information there. That means that now I can go to the guide and basically deploy my first process. So I'm deploying my process there. And again, I can see here that the process was deployed. That's the process ID which is the same process ID that I have here, right? That's the ID. I can use that in order to start new instances of this workflow. And that's basically the next step. The next step is that I can go to the guide and I can say, okay, let's start an instance with these variables. In this case, the emergency reason is a person. We can just put a more complex emergency reason there if we want to. So I can start that. I create a new workflow instance and I will start another instance with the emergency reason building on fire, okay? So I created these two workflow instances uh, and the next step usually would be to say, okay, 
now I want to see how these processes are running into operate, right? Again, we have the same problem as before. We are running outside the cluster. We want to look into what's happening inside the cluster, inside the service. In this case, operate is running inside the cluster. So we need to find a way to route traffic from my local environment to operate. I can do the same thing that I did in here, where I did the port forward to um, the service itself. So I can access only from this machine. But in general, we are using this Nginx ingress controller in order to provide us a single entry point for all the HTTP1 services. In this case, we only have operate. Uh, that means that if, we, if you were running in a Kubernetes cluster that is running inside the cloud provider, by just doing that, you should be able to see the external IP provided by the ingress controller load balancer. In that case, you can do something like QCTL, get services, get services, and you should be able to see here the external IP provided for that load balancer that this ingress controller is creating. In this case, it's still in pending because I'm running in Kubernetes kind that doesn't support load balancers. Uh, and for that reason, I will be, I, in order to route traffic, I will need to port forward into this one as well. So if I do kubectl port forward, let's see for service, the name of the service, sorry about that. The name of the service uh, plus the ports, I should be able to access to the ingress controller, which is going to route me to operate at the end of the day. So, um, so I'm routing my local host 8080 to port 80 on the ingress controller. That's routing traffic. That means that I can go to the browser. I can refresh this screen. Uh, this is operate. That it's running inside my Kubernetes cluster, right? Uh, I can go here uh, to the dashboard first. I can see that I have two instances and just a single version. And I can clearly see here that there are two instances stopped here in classify emergency. And that's only because I'm not providing any implementation for these service tasks, right? I need workers now to be able to execute the logic of, the, of these service tasks. So for this uh, simple video, I've just created a worker here using Spring Boot. And in a Spring Boot, the only thing that you need to do is you need to add this dependency to your Spring Boot application. And then inside the application class, the Spring Boot application class, I can enable CV client. Now my Spring Boot application is a CV client. That means that it can connect to a CV cluster. And then declaratively, you are defining the workers here. In this case, the implementation for the classified service task, the implementation for the hospital task, and the implementation for the firefighter task. Uh, again, super simple implementation here. This is where you implement your business logic the connection to an external service in this case, if you are doing service orchestration. Uh, and in this case, I'm just evaluating the value for that emergency recent process variable that it was created and initialized when I started the instance. Just checking, depending on the content of that variable and then just going different ways, depending on what the uh, emergency is related to. And then in the hospital and firefighters, I'm just completing automatically the tasks, just going to the end of the, of the process. So, in order to do, in order to run this, in order to provide these implementations, I will need to connect to the cluster. Uh, this Spring Boot application will need to connect to the cluster. And again, by default, this is configured to go to localhost 26500, uh, which is, it's already working like that because I am already doing that port forward in here, right? So if I run my, my Spring Boot application here, if I run my Spring Boot application here, which is under, this directory. You can find the source code for this application in my GitHub account, uh, which is here. So you probably will have here the URL for that source code. There you go. So that's the project. Feel free to copy it. But again, it's a very simple Spring Boot uh, ZV worker. So let me get that started. And I will be able to run this application with just Maven because I'm again in development mode, so I can just start this. And as soon as I start this, it will connect to the cluster, it will fetch all the jobs for these workers, and it will automatically execute these jobs, right? So it's completing the job, completing the job, completing the job. If I go back to operate, I should be able to see that these instances are now completed, and one each, right? Remember that at the beginning, I created one uh, instance for a person and the other one for like building on fire. So that's basically finishing there.
So if you're interested in, in giving this a try, please let me know. Uh, drop me a comment, drop me a message in, in Twitter at Salavoy. Um, please get in touch if you want to test uh, these Helm charts into different uh, cloud providers as well. Uh, you can find all the information about these Helm charts in helm.cv.io. And I will be linking here at this Getting Started Guide if you're interested in testing it out and uh, you know contributing to it. Feel free to reach out. Take care. Bye-bye.